<laughs> yeah, so I did oh, my research. Somebody <laughs> did their research. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I did, yeah. Welcome to my studio and welcome to another edition of Art Success with me, Adelaide Dunwa. Today's interview is with fine art photographer Ade Okilarin. Ade is also known as Asiko. Ade is a bit of a clever clogs. He graduated with a degree in chemistry from Brighton University in 2001. Ade said he's always had a keen interest in art and in 2005 he developed an interest in photography because he was given a camera and he started to take pictures, but this general interest in photography then grew into a real passion for fine art photography. Ade says that art opened his eyes to who he is as a person, and it has taken him on a really interesting and really quite impressive journey, because in a really relatively short space of time, he's gone on to accomplish some pretty impressive things, including being featured in Vogue Italia, and also being picked up for major representation by Relay Gallery in Nigeria. And he's currently got a very impressive exhibition on at the Gallery of African Art in Mayfair here in London. That's on until the 24th of September, 2016. So if you're watching this before, then do go and see the show. Now, as far as his rise goes, I will let Ade or Asiko himself describe that because he does it far more eloquently than I ever could. I'd always been interested in art. It's always been uh, quite important. Possibly not at the forefront, uh, but something clicked when my mum bought me this little Casio camera. Yeah, Casio camera, but anyway. Um, so she bought me this Casio camera and I started taking photos and you know, I took photos of flowers, I took photos of all sorts of things. And then people were, oh, and I started running this little blog and then people said, oh, come and pick my wedding. Like, why would you do that? But it just kind of snowballed and I started taking pictures of everything. And then I decided to, I started weeding out what I wasn't interested in photographing. And then I found, I started to find my voice uh, in terms of, I guess now I'm a bit more further down the line where I'm talking about my culture, I'm talking about identity, I'm talking about uh, women. Um, but I kind of shot loads of different things and I kind of explored, which I think is great for everybody to do, to kind of explore and just find out who they are. I think my art has helped me find who I am and it, art kind of opens my eyes to different things which I maybe may have not come across or may have not questioned or looked into. Uh, so that's one of the things I enjoy on, I guess, an emotional level. So, uh, and yeah. when did you graduate at, um, oh. at Brighton? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2001. Okay. Yeah. And then when did that transition happen from... So it happened... Oh, wow, I'd been working for three years. I picked up that camera in 2005. I think I was in between contracts and I just started photographing. And I think for I don't know, possibly five years, I was just messing around. It was a hobby. And then I started to take it seriously. And then I thought, ooh, I want to do this, I want to do fashion, or I want to do this. And then I found I had, didn't really have an interest there. And I found I wanted to tell a story, or I wanted a narrative through my images. And however that came in terms of, you know, if clients came for me to shoot, the important thing, I was shooting what I was interested in shooting it. Uh, I think I lost my way at one time because um, I decided to do photography full time. Yeah. How that is that losing your way? I lost my way not because I decided to do photography full time, but because of what I was creating. I wasn't actually creating anymore. I was more chasing the money. Okay. And then I decided, after about a year and a half, I decided to go back, and it was important for me to create what was in, what was important to me so you know when you're struggling financially your creation is not at its peak so I decided I'll go back to work and I went back about three years ago and it was the best decision I ever made because right now I'm at the point where I'm creating stuff which I 
think is really going to push me to where I'm supposed to be as an artist. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because when you don't have those money worries, you don't have to worry about making stuff that sells. Exactly. Yeah. So now you, you do the photography in your spare time. So you work full time. Uh, kind of three quarters time <laughs> is work and then the quarter. So I, I'm, I'm not completely full time. Mm -hmm. I do about four, four ish days a week. Uh, sometimes depending on how things are busy, I might go in um, a bit more. So I have some time to work on projects, but it's quite challenging because I don't have as much time in the day to really create or to really think of things. Or as, as an artist, you know, there's the admin side as well, which can just take God knows how long to do. Or, you know, you're trying to um, work on the project side of things, you know, plan things. That takes quite a while as well. Yeah, yeah. When did you 100% know if I want to be an artist? Possibly about two years ago. Two years, is that all? Yeah. I think, so th th for, for me, there was a, a gradual thing of where I started to, you know, you pick up the camera, you start to create, but that's just taking photos. But then you need to, uh, you start to look at your photos and you want them to be something more to tell a message or, or to write a narrative through them. And that's, that, you know, that was, even when I thought that way, it still took a while to come to, uh, about two years ago when I thought, oh, okay, this is what I want to start to talk about because it's part of who I am and I can put it into the work. So do you have a studio or? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, the, I would love a studio, but I, th I also think about it practically. It, it's gonna cost to have a studio. And I shoot a lot outside. This is a project that was shot inside, but I do a lot of stuff outside. Um, I like being in nature, I, and I, I love to shoot my subjects actually outside. Um, I tend to pick specific type of places. I was looking through my work and I found, I look for places which, which are kind of broken down but then have this beauty in them. So you have old buildings, but then with uh, vines and trees growing, I found it's all through my work. So there's something about uh, a brokenness, but then a beauty in brokenness, which is strange, but yeah. That's not strange. I think that's interesting. This part is just artistic. It's just what interests you, Yes. what catches your eye. Yeah. In terms of your relationship with the Gallery of African Art, how did that come about? So it's been great, actually. Um, I think they contacted Michelle, who works here, contacted me, um, I think it was about two months ago. She found my work through Instagram. Okay. So for all those people that say Instagram doesn't work, they are liars, <laughs> it does. Um, I mean, I decided about two years ago I was gonna focus and just start to put stuff on Instagram and start to talk about my inspirations, talk about the things that I'm going through with an artist or the things I've seen. Uh, so it's kind of commentary on my journey. So Michelle saw my work and she sent me, I think it was an email. Was it an email or it was a call? And in my head I was thinking, why is, I found it strange because I, I was like, well, this is a gallery, they're calling me, why? <laughs> And when I came in and we had a chat, it was, it was great. I met Mrs. Kuko as well, who actually runs the gallery. So we've had a good relationship and this is, I guess this is one, this is my big first type showcase in the UK, which is, which is great for me. That's, that's opening and I guess threading new ground. Yeah, because you've shown a lot in Nigeria, right? Yes, so I have a gallery there called Relic who represent my work there. And I, I'm quite glad for that as well. That's, it's good to have a base there and have things going on there as well. And how did the relationship with Relay come about? Oh, Instagram as well. Really? Yes, Instagram as well. So the uh, owner, she contacted me through an email and she said, because I was talking about galleries and I was saying, you know, I was 
talking about how artists can get represented and stuff. And that's something I was thinking of that year, that I wanted to start to do that, speak to galleries, go to shows, meet people, and not just be insular. Um, and she, so she was, I think she may have been, she started about six months to a year by then. Uh, so she, she contacted me, we had a good chat, yeah, and it's there. So, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate in, in, in that respect. And it's funny, now just speaking, I'm actually beginning to take stock in my head, which sometimes <laughs> I don't. I'm not very good at living in the moment, which is really bad. Um, but it's actually taking stock. It's like, you wanted a gallery in Nigeria, you want a gallery here. That's kind of come about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's become famous, so they say. Yeah, so I'm quite fortunate. <laughs> I've noted in the last few years, in London specifically, there yeah. has been a real increase in interest in African art. <laughs> um, <laughs> or work by African artists, mm. specifically work from artists who are actually from the continent as opposed mm. to diaspora artists, as evidenced by the, the fact that GAFRA exists and um, Bonhams and their African art auctions, mm. which are very successful. But what I'm interested in is you as an artist who you were born in Nigeria, but you've lived in the UK since when? 1995, right? Yeah. yeah, so I did oh, my research. Somebody <laughs> did the research. Oh, yeah. I did, yeah. I mean, have you felt that increase in interest as an artist specifically? And, and how do you think that's impacted on your practice um, and, and how you, I guess, navigate the art world? Um, it didn't really affect, I, I mean, I definitely see that and I see there's a lot of interest, um, uh, which is great. It hasn't really affected what I do. So if there was interest or no interest, this would still be happening. For me, I looked at my work, I kind of did a survey of my work and I found, actually, this is what you're interested in shooting. This is what you're interested in creating. Why is that? Question that. And then I found this was also the strongest set of work that I, I had done. So for me, it was more, this was always going to be the case because it's more about my journey. I pray that my work would always sell in some sort of place, or even if it wasn't a thing here, maybe somewhere else. I, I know there is, but you know, those things sometimes rise and fall. I don't, we don't know what it would be like in five years from now. It might be Chinese art, which might be a big thing then. I, I don't know. But I'm grateful that I'm here and I can actually show my work now. But yeah, there has been quite a rise in it. But I always feel that people should not jump on bandwagons and just be true to themselves and just create what's important to them. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been conscious of any racial bias in terms of navigating the art world? And if you have, have you dealt with it? Okay, honestly, I haven't. Um, I think the art world to me is a bit new, it's, so I'm still just trying to begin and navigate my way through. How would I navigate it? Hmm, that would be interesting. Uh, it's one of those things because I, I believe in speaking up and uh, confronting problems head on. <laughs> but sometimes I've been told that that might not be the best <laughs> way to do things. I, I don't know. It, it will possibly depend on context and what's happening at that time. It seems like things might be good, or at least the thing about London, which I love. I've lived in different cities, uh, uh, well, in Europe. But the thing I love about London is London is quite open uh, compared to other places I've lived. And um, you have all these different races here, and people are open to different cultures. That you know, there's there, there's a sometimes an inquis curiosity to know about these cultures. So I think that as well is quite helpful. So hopefully, it will just continue to be that. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> what would you say has been your biggest challenge to date as an artist, and how do you overcome it? I kind of fine tuning what I do as an artist. Uh, kind of. One, it's, it's about the journey and trying to understand where, not where I fit in, 
in the whole scheme of everybody because well you're just gonna go by other people's standards but where I fit in the best version of me and that's been a journey because there's a lot of stuff to unpack emotionally in terms of being that person and that feeds into the work I, I do a lot of self portraiture and that feeds out through aspects of there and this as well so that's been a challenge also kind of understanding the art industry that's that's also it's a bit of a challenge but it's kind of an everyday thing so yeah yeah well i've seen that uh you've you've won a couple of awards already <laughs> um, featured in vogue italia now at gaffra what would you say has been your biggest success to date and how did you achieve it gaffra yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's um it's it's yeah for me it's been the, the biggest and the best of 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 things um and i wasn't expecting it so about three months ago this was all i was th because i have another show in nigeria at the end of october that's where my focus was so this kind of came and it was like a surprise um, so it was a good thing so i um yeah so yeah as they say, God works in mysterious ways, so that's all. <laughs> what would you say success in the art world means to you? That's, that's an interesting one. So, I guess being gallery represented, that, you know, that's, that's great. And it would be that what I do as an artist kind of pays for my life and I can leave what I do in the pharmaceutical industry which is great in its own way but I'd love to be immersed in, in art you know 24 7 as opposed to what it is I have this vision in my head of, of I can see where I live uh, and arts kind of paid for that and you know it's it's a nice place somewhere on the outskirts of London in the country and <laughs> I know it's safe um, and I and I have a little baby girl who's playing on the floor with my pictures and she has paint all over her because oh. I'm trying out something with paint and it's the idea that my my personal life and my art life working together and the art life is kind of paying for that that for me that that would be amazing and it's gonna get there it will get there yeah that's that's a really sweet cute image <laughs> you just marinate on that <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, if you could go back in time uh. <laughs> to the Ade who just graduated from, no, actually, no, not that Ade. Oh. The Ade who oh, just started. Push it. <laughs> oh. Ade who just started his first entry into the art world. Oh, yeah. That's so interesting. What advice would you give him? See, you're presenting too many problems here. <laughs> so there's the idea of time travel and should I have gone back even further and say, don't, when you go to Brighton, go to art school or do something art related. So even if you decide, even if you're going to do chemistry, which you're going to end up doing, make sure you're still clued in because I picked up art in 2005. I'd already formed a lot of things as a young adult at that time. I wish I'd picked up art. Even if I wasn't practicing, I wish I'd picked up art and was actually creating from um, a while back. Um, but what I could tell myself, ooh, be patient. But see, if I was saying that, be patient, that means I feel like I've made it. Which is a strange concept because I wouldn't, I can't, there's too much. <laughs> there's too much. 
So it's the idea that I feel like I made it, which I don't think I have, but I, then I think I have, because I feel every day is that. The idea that there's going to be that moment where it all falls in and, you know, I'm going to be, hey, no. Nah. It, it's, it's, it's a process. So, but I, I would say be patient. Um, I would say cr create from within and don't look at anybody else and just uh, focus on what, go to more friggin' exhibitions. <laughs> go to more friggin' exhibitions. Go and see more old art. I'd love to explore my culture more. So I would tell him, you know, go and see the Ayo parade that happens in Nigeria. Go and see, you know, festivals or things that are happening. Oh yeah, get out of the studio. And when I mean studio, get out of what you are shooting now, which I'm shooting a lot of portraiture, but I actually th I've actually started shooting documentary. And I think part of me, the subjects I'm picking are very much important to me, but I feel that's important and I should have started shooting that years ago. So what about if um, you, you had a complete stranger who was just trying to follow in your footsteps and do what you're doing, but right now, what advice would you give them? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, I, I, I would say, um, when I first started looking into things, I thought, ooh, I'll do it this way and that way and this way and that way. Nothing, none of that stuff works. Where I am right now is, it's not how I thought it was going to be. I thought I'd do this and do this and do this and I'd be in a certain place. So the idea that there's one way is not it. I would say just keep creating and if you can find a way to support yourself financially in the midst of that, then do that. Um, so you're not worrying about money, but create what's important to you. If I meet any photographer right now, or, or anybody who's an artist, create what's important to you. Create the, um, things based on who you are as a person. And when you start to look at that, then you start to actually, who am I? And then you, it's more a self, self-exploration or self-discovery so you're as you're developing your art you're finding out who you are as a person and you start to look down that route so it makes so art for me has opened up a lot more of who I am and you know, my emotional baggage yeah perfect thank you very much Hello and welcome back. Thanks for joining me for that edition of Art Success with me, Adelaide Damois and Asiko. If you are interested in viewing his show, please do go down to the Gallery of African Art. It's on until the 24th of September 2016. If you're watching this after that date, then we'll check the description bar below. The, the website details are there. You can contact the gallery and have a look and see what other exhibitions they've got on. And if you're interested in Ade himself, please do get in contact with the gallery as well. Please do subscribe to my channel because by subscribing, you get to keep up to date with all of the latest interviews like this one. Plus, I'm doing exhibition vlogs. So uh, there is an exhibition vlog about Ade and his work in this current show. Um, I will link that below so that you can get some a bit more information about the show itself and about his work within the show. Until next time, take care. Bye.